That word underrated is thrown around all too often these days, with most using the word purely to elevate their sanctimonious and self-righteous egos in an attempt to seem like some elite god-tier connoisseur of the gaming industry. Hey, that nice. <laughs> nice! <laughs> but Prey, Prey really is hugely underrated. If you speak to anyone who's played the game, they're likely to rate it quite highly and the review scores averaged around the 8 out of 10 mark, but it's rarely mentioned in conversation or in top 5s or top 10 lists and the sales were 60% lower than Arcane Studios' previous title, Dishonored 2. This is criminal and 2017 didn't have that much competition stealing the limelight either. It did have some with Breath of the Wild and Horizon Zero Dawn going toe to toe for Game of the Year, but nothing compared to 2018. The game was marketed pretty poorly too and the bad decision to hold back review copies until the release date didn't exactly help alongside the confusion around there being another totally unrelated game called Prey which had a cancelled sequel planned for 2014. But for anyone who's never played the 2017 Prey before, I'm hoping you'll be willing to give it a second look by the end of this video. Prey is set in an alternative universe where President Kennedy survived and the Soviet Union had discovered you social aliens known as the Typhon and working with the United States and founding the corporation Transtar, they built the space station Talos-1 which was used to house the Typhon so they could conduct their research. The scientists' research harnessed technology that would alter humanity as we know it, developing Neuromancer, a pretty invasive tool that requires injecting through the eyeball giving users instant instantaneous knowledge of complex skills and abilities. Yes, science! But, as with all good movies and games, wacky scientists trying to either contain an experiment on a very dangerous discovery or simply wanting to play God, things go tits up, and not only do the Typhon escape, wreaking havoc and tearing their way through the staff of Talos 1, we, the player, after heavy use of these brain-enhancing neuromods, have woken with a severe case of pink eye, no recollection of where we are, what we're doing, and absolutely nothing in the way of newfound brain power. Stupid science bitch couldn't even make I more smarter! Not yet at least, anyway. Prey is one of the most memorable intros that I can think of. Playing as either the male or female Morgan Yu, we wake up to a call from our brother Alex Yu, who asks that we head to the chopper on the roof to continue with the tests you've been working on together. At first, this particular batch of testing is going rather well, using my latest round of neuromods to become some kind of super sneaky hiding genius. I can, um, see your feet. But not everything goes to plan though, and this becomes our first glimpse of one of my favourite enemy designs I can think of, the Mimics. We're gassed unconscious and we wake up in a deja vu like moment, except this time there's some eerie differences and you'll soon realise that we're the test subject in a simulation aboard Talos 1. From here, the game and Talos 1 opens up and almost instantly we're introduced to the dense and highly detailed world that Arcane have built, with so much to interact with and so many alternative ways to explore in this chilling atmosphere. Navigating the corridors of Talos 1 still haunts me on what is probably my sixth playthrough by now, thanks to an incredible soundtrack written by Mick Gordon, who's best known for the Doom soundtrack, and he does such a great job of showcasing his amazing talent to create an atmosphere away from the heavy metal depths of hell. The enemy design of the Typhon are pretty cool as they essentially start off as this strange black substance that morph into various versions of themselves, each with their own specific role in their ecosystem, growing more deadly as the story progresses. Phantoms, which are the most humanoid Typhon of the group because they're formed from humans, in fact they're the corrupt bodies of the Talos 1 staff members. Cystoids, which are these spiky globules that spawn from a nest moving in packs and explode on impact. Telepaths described as floating mind slave machines, firing psychic blasts of energy your way as well as invading groups of human minds and forcing each human to approach your position before their heads explode to inflict damage. Poltergeists, really adding another layer of horror to the atmosphere, hiding in corners and visible until they attack by picking up anything and everything in the room to launch at you. Nightmares, the strongest Typhon in the game, a massive shape-shifting behemoth that appears 
randomly in the late game and stalks you through the space station for a set time, inflicting massive damage if you're caught in its sight. The Weavers, an amalgamation of mimics that has the ability to create phantoms from human corpses, and of course my favourite, the mimics themselves, having this unique polymorphic ability to, as the name would suggest, mimic any object in the room, concealing itself before ambushing its prey. You'll eventually notice the very subtle clues to spot these mimics, like objects out of place or an object might jitter slightly if you look close enough, but early on they evoke a deep state of irrational paranoia to the point where I just completely lost my mind, smashing everything in the room just to be safe. <laughs> There's a nice selection of weapons and grenades we can use to counter the Typhon. There's most of the obvious ones you'd expect, wrench, pistol and shotgun, but some pretty cool scientific weaponry like the Q-beam that fires this constant beam of light until the Typhon explode, or the multi-purpose glue cannon that coats the Typhon in this foam, giving you time to escape or inflict more damage. One of my favourite aspects to pray was that ammunition wasn't exactly freely flowing through the space station, but the crafting system is such an addictive and satisfying loop because pretty much everything on Talos 1 is a material. Using the recycler machines found around Talos 1, we can throw in anything in our inventory to recycle and the necessary materials for crafting pop out of the other end. We then take these materials to the other machine used for crafting, the fabricator. Finding blueprints around Talos 1, we unlock new items to fabricate from weapons, ammo, medikits, quest specific items and even neuromods to unlock more skills. This crafting system was so compelling and constantly expanding as we find more and more blueprints. The most inspired aspect of this system is we're not limited to just picking stuff up, carting it over to the recycler and chucking it in. We're given recycler grenades which act as a mobile recycler machine. Simply lob the grenade at a cluster of random objects and watch the little gizmo work its magic, converting all the objects in its radius into these rather handy and pocketable materials. How convenient! The neuromods not only increase the typical human skills you'd expect to see, like crafting higher quality gear, increasing inventory space, repairing more complex machines and lifting heavier items to name just a few, but later into the story they also unlock the ability to use the Typhon's power against them, and by either being stealthy or using the glue cannon to freeze the Typhon in place, we can use our scope which scans the Typhon, collecting research and if you've done enough homework on them, the Typhon side of the skill tree will expand, unlocking new abilities. These come at the cost of neuromods and the danger of being targeted by the the many gun turrets dotted around Talos 1, which now recognise you as one of the Typhons and shoot on sight. These abilities are well worth investing in for at least one playthrough, because not only are skills like the electrostatic burst and the kinetic blast helpful during combat, but there's skills like the remote manipulation that can unlock doors or my absolute favourite using the mimic ability to either hide yourself or morph into something small enough to squeeze through small gaps, opening up whole new areas to explore. As with a lot of Arcane Studio games, exploration is intoxicating, and over the years this has almost become a signature of their game design. There's a plethora of areas that have a multitude of ways to find your way in. Find the keycard, find the password to a staff member's PC, use your toy dart gun to fire these little foam darts at nearby touchscreen monitors, find a secret hatch, or is that hatch out of reach? Not to worry, whip out your glue cannon and build yourself some makeshift stepping stones and climb your way up there. From start to finish, Talos 1 is such an enjoyable playground to manipulate. We're constantly rewarded for backtracking, and it never feels like a chore thanks to the new enemy type spawning, altered environments, and during the early stages of Prey, we're frequently teased by locked safes, doors, and hidden paths that now become accessible in the later game. There's very little human interaction during the story, but the people we do meet often have such interesting and intriguing backstories to them, but even though the presence of human life is pretty limited, I've never felt a game brings so much life to an area that's so void of humans. I can't think of many better stories that are told pretty much entirely through emails, notes and audio logs, to the point where I felt such a connection to the personalities and the relationships between the staff of Talos 1. The breadcrumb trail of death and destruction is kept alive so well thanks to the palpable writing and character design of characters you're likely only ever going to see the corpses of. 
Parade ticks all the boxes that I want from a game. An atmospheric world with such dense environments to explore, looting to my heart and my inventory capacities, content, unique guns and gadgets and skills to make use of, and an in-depth crafting system that continuously expands and keeps me coming back for more. Although you can finish praying roughly around 20 hours, it's got a lot of granularity to its endings too, and these are mostly based on the side quests you choose to follow up on and those which you choose to ignore. There aren't many games that have urged me to immediately start playing a second playthrough, but Prey is one of those games, and this is complemented by the various play styles typical to an arcane game and of course the multiple endings. If you've never played Prey before, I hope I've twisted your arm into considering giving it a go, and if you've enjoyed the video, I also hope I've twisted your arm into subscribing. If you've already played Prey though, let me know what you enjoy about it, or do you not like it at all? Was it not your cup of tea? Either way, I hope to see you in the next one.